Ebony Unicorn here. So, y'all probably know from the last video that I made about Clubhouse that it's a no for me, dog. Like, <laughs> insert Randy, whatever, American Idol judge, like, it's a no for me. Um, it's the ghetto. Like, <laughs> I gotta add that meme with Nene Leaks. Ooh, child, the ghetto. <laughs> Ooh, Kenya, we gotta find you a house, honey. Ugh, not a white refrigerator. Ugh. Ugh. Anyhow, I had no idea, like, this whole Tariq Nishi thing, right? So I was responding to the way Tariq Nasheed was posting on Twitter, right? The things that he was saying, the thread that was beneath, like like just what his community was doing with the situation with the clerk, right? I'm going to call him Caleb the clerk, okay? Um, this whole so-called meltdown thing that, you know, I, I mean, the guy who filmed him is just a gutter butt hood booger back alley like he's one of those people who just have no sense he's one of those people that when police pull black people over he's who they think we are like i, I could say some really brutal things right now but i'm going to try to to move past that but um you can see in just the way he carries himself and the things that he said when people went to his Facebook regarding how he filmed Caleb, the, the former clerk, and basically antagonized him and trolled him. You, you could just see the character was vacant. Like, it's just a truly mean, truly degenerate, truly disgusting person worth divesting from eternally. Like, he's just messed up in the head, messed up in the heart, irredeemable as far as I can see. So when I made my video, I didn't know what was going on on Clubhouse. I had no idea until I saw this video by this, um, Crystal and Karazin posted it on her community tab. It was, um, it was a white guy basically applauding, um, how the sisters were responding to Tariq Nasheed's, um, a falsification of evidence basically implying a racial superimposing a racial issue that just was not there this was a very colorless mental health issue and i stand by that as a person with cptsd yeah so i had no idea that like what was going on in the ghetto aka club <laughs> where he was calling the women bed winches. like I knew like I, I came into a Crystal and Kara's in a live stream pretty late and they started calling him Tourette's Nish <laughs> because they're like he just has a sudden inflammation of the need to say bed winch bed winch bed winch you know which which is a horrible word like I don't even say it very well just because it's not a word that I use right painful history behind that word I mean it is next to the n-word it is next to the f-word that sounds like maggot like it, it, it's a horrible word okay you're you're, you're talking centuries of rape okay of little girls and that's what they called my ancestors bed warmers and bed wenches it, it, it's horrific it's horrific like it's it's worse than coon it's worse than sambo it's worse than sapphire it's worse than mammy it's worse than i mean it's 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 up there right anyhow i had no idea that he was in the ghetto talking about oh i don't care about what you you foreign bed witches have to say you're not fba his concoction of you know uh, ADOS or DACS. So ADOS, um, American Descendants of Slavery, which I am, also were called DACS, uh, Descendants of American Chattel Slavery, his FBA term, Foundational Black Americans, because, right, so many people qualify as Black. However, not everybody comes from the lineage that I come from when it comes to, like, like me and Barack Obama are not the same. Like, that man's father was a Kenyan. Whereas my parents, 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 parents built America, built America for free. Okay. 
So he was telling them that their opinions didn't matter because one, they're from the UK or wherever they were from. And two, because um, they were bed winches, right? Because, <laughs> sorry, that word makes me, um, Mufasa, 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 Ooh, right? Um, <laughs> cringy. So I just lost everybody who hasn't seen the original Lion King. Great. Anyhow, um, I had no idea that that clubhouse thing happened until I saw the guy who posted about it. Tariq Nasheed has no idea how he shows up in the world. He is completely, utterly, like he's not self-aware. Like he thinks he's smooth. He thinks he's sexy. He thinks he's a boss. He thinks he's not a sellout. He thinks he is a true pro black and he is emblematic of the black people who, this is why people like me are no longer pro blacks, right? Like most people who identify as pro black are really pro black male. They don't care about black children. They don't care about black women right? Um, I know hoteps who are true hoteps, but you know, their movement was infiltrated with foteps, F-A-U-X, foteps, fake teps. And now just hearing anything that is hoteperish, it it, it just, you know, I exit stage stage left, you know, I just, I I don't want to be in there. Um, Because it's, it's just the, the exalting of, you know, the black male in spite of everything else. Um, and I don't think that that is balanced or healthy. And he's one of those people. And I'm just like, dude, you were a joke to those women in that room. And they weren't even, the sad thing is that they weren't even cussing him out, right? It was so pathetic because like, they weren't even like, like, how do I say this? You know how you get up under somebody's skin and they start yelling and talking really fast and, you know, they, they're just going off, they're snapping. The women in that room were like, oh my God, you're actually outside of your mind. Like, like just, just almost pitying him. Like it was, I mean, if it would have been anybody else, I would have had like contact embarrassment, like secondhand, like humiliation, but it was just like, you have no idea how you sound. Like you are a relic, like, like you are the past. Like this whole, you know, proud to be a pimp thing, pimps up, pose down, bros over hoes type of culture. I'm just like, y'all are out of style. It doesn't look good anymore. There was a time in the 90s where, you know, people thought all that pimp stuff was cute. Bishop Don Juan, green and gold, goblets, thought that was the thing to be. Permed hair, a pimp named Slickback, yada, yada, yada. And I'm just like, yesterday is not today. And just the entire way he carries himself, I'm just like, it looks, <sighs> yo, it, it it just looks, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call it sus and let you think of whatever you want to imply. It looks suspect. It was sad that the way the women responded to him were like, oh my God, this guy's really sick in the head. Like you're sick in the head. Like, they didn't even, like, oh, you're stupid, you mother F, you this, you, they're like, oh, he's sick in the head. Like, dismissive, and I'm just like, ouch, hurts, ooh, embarrassing, and the killing part, the killing part, the killing part about all of this is that he kept calling them bedwinches, and I'm just like, you're a hop, skip, and a jump from being in an interracial relationship, what do you mean? I I have said several times on my channel that Tariq Nasheed is a man who told thousands of black men to aspire to marry biracial women with white mothers, not the ones with black mothers, but the ones specifically with white mothers from the upper echelons of society because she will act like her white mother as opposed to a biracial woman with a black mother who will act like a black woman. I'm like, you are within that kind of rhetoric. You have exposed your problem with black women. I remember he made a post on Twitter because, you know, Eve is married to her white billionaire from another country. And he's like, when did we lose Eve? Negro, please. You didn't care about Eve. 
Eve is a, Eve has what a biracial mother and a black dad. She doesn't make the cut for you, Tariq. She doesn't make the cut for women for for quote unquote black women who matter. She doesn't make the cut. She doesn't have the white mother and the black dad. Why do you care? You told all these thousands of black men that we weren't worthy. And that this is the top-notch female to be with. And low-key, like... <sighs> look, I've got no problem. His wife's name is Peanut. And I've got zero problems with Peanut. She looks like a really sweet woman. But... Yo. <sighs> I'm, I'm gonna hold myself um, back. Because I really, truly... Um, I mean what I said, so I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. But I remember uh, watching Tariq Nasheed show off his home one time and how big his home is. And he lives in this wonderful gated community, this wonderful great big home. And we got to see his home because the broken hearted, you know, somebody G of the gynocracy was broken hearted because she thought that that was going to be her man. And it wasn't so out of spite. She doxed him and, and, and had his home swatted and laughed about it in all of our faces. And I mean, it just, just, Y'all, YouTube can be a dirty, nasty place for, for uh, public figures. Anyhow, he was showing us the inside of his home and it was so dirty. It was like a pigsty. It was, no, that, that would be wrong because pigs are actually very organized. Pigs are actually organized. Google that. Um, and also to say someone is, this is a side note, to say that you're sweating like a pig is false because pigs don't sweat. That's why they're full of nasty toxins and they're horrible animals to eat. They don't have, you know, like, blah, 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 yuck. Anyhow, back to the subject. When I looked at how willing he was to walk around his house with all of that chaos present, peace has an anatomy. This is why you learn things from Buddhism like feng shui and how energy flows in a home. Peace and a home has an analogy, the way, I mean, anatomy, the way that your body has anatomy. Peace is organized. Peace is clean. Peace is when everything is put in its place. And his, oh God, his home was just loud with filth, loud with disorganization, loud with things all out of place. And, you know, like, it's a big home. It's a beautiful home. But I'm just like... Do you not get that you're not supposed to show your home when it's like that? You you're not supposed to do that. Like how are you that unaware or inviting people to your home for cookouts and things when it's not clean? Like you can afford to hire a cleaning service. Maybe not maybe not every day, but just for public appearances when you're alive, when you're showing things like like dude the, the, these are simple things and I'm just like I'll put it like this some of these men prefer women who so there, there, there is a scientific uh, study out there that says the smarter women are the more likely they are to not get married and so sometimes men want to marry a woman who they've as far when it comes to intelligence, they far exceed her. And I think that is the dynamic between Peanut and Tariq. And this is what people have alleged. They have alleged other things about um, Peanut that I don't feel comfortable saying because I respect her. But I'm just like, You really don't see how you show up in the world. You really don't see how you're embarrassing yourself. You really don't see how you are contradicting your message. You really don't see how you have hurt the group of women who have supported you the most. When he talks like this to black women, he makes it very evident that him and the men who follow him are the type of black men that black women must divest from. 
he and his followers, their ilk of black men are the type, are the prototypical type of black men, African-American women in specific, must disavow. I used to, here. here's something about me you might not know. I used to go to everybody I knew, white mothers of black children who are biracial, everybody who had a black child in their home, I would go and, and just peddle hidden colors, right? By Tariq Nasheed. And I would tell everyone, you got to watch hidden colors. You got to watch hidden colors. You got to watch, you know, you, you got to do this. And then in the midst of me trying to pump out that material that, you know, basically is his life's work, I heard what he said to thousands of black men about, and this is a guy who's been on the breakfast club. Like this guy is a public figure all the way. This guy is a, you know, a a celebrity all the way. He might be like QW list celebrity, but, but nonetheless a public figure. And I'm like, he told all those people, all those men, the best of women that you can marry is one with a white mother. I'm just like, Ooh, for for me that invalidates everything I mean because in reality beauty and good character comes in all colors whatever but if you're like that's not pro-black that's pro-black male and it has turned a lot of people a lot of women into being pro-black female because somebody's got to care about us somebody's got to love us and we have no allies. It has turned us into ourselves to be allies to ourselves because we don't have groups that support us, including, you know, black men. Like, let's say in Muslims, for example, Muslims have LGBTQ community people who support them, immigrants who support them, refugees who support them, African-Americans who support them, Democrats who support them. And, and, you know, there are certain groups like, let's say, um, I don't want to say the J word, um, Hebrews, Israelites. I don't, I also don't want to say Hebrew for personal reasons because, uh, you know, you, if you know, you know, um, I try to reserve the word Hebrew for those who are Semitic. Uh, genetically. So um, I'll say Israeli. So like APEC and the Israeli uh, Americans, like they have all kind of people who support them. They have groups of Christians who support them, Protestant and Catholic. They have uh, Muslims who support them. They have the LGBTQ community. They have Democrats. They've got Republicans. They've got all sorts of groups of people who support them and their lobby and their country. They've got Starbucks, you know, which is practically a Zionist organization. But I'm just like, African American women don't have those kind of groups to line up behind them. And at least, like, let's say uh, Koreans, at least maybe some people are mad at Koreans or mad at the Vietnamese, but they support each other. And they grow from that. But like with black men, by and large, they feel like they can do better than black women. And my thing is, I mean, I'm learning every day why black men feel that way. I'm getting more and more exposed to the disappointments that some black men have with black women. So um, I'm evolving in that way. Some of the things that I'm finding out and, you know, what's common and what's not, because I'm used to black women who are just divine. Okay. That that's what I come from. I, I come from a mother who was full of divinity, a grandmother who was full of divinity. You know, I grew up in a historically black church where the women were full of divinity and goodness and morality and high noble character. So this, um, endemic proportions of back alley hood rat hood booger women who are so spiteful they don't let their father see the children like that's kind of that's a wake-up call for me basically so I'm, I'm starting to learn how to have compassion for that to a degree anyhow 
(sighs) We don't have allies, including men like Tariq Nasheed and his followers. The Koreans, you know, they at least have Korean men and women who support them, right? Korean men, women, and children support one another. That's not the reality with black people. And there are so many black people who think that they are for the community who don't really support black people. I'm going to try to find the footage where, because so many people like to talk about Kevin Samuels, I'm going to find the footage where he said black women are just not beautiful in the face, right? We're just not pretty like like this guy. <laughs> Kappa Alpha Psi. Every noob on this earth needs to disavow Kevin Samuels because he has exposed himself as someone who is full of hatred towards black women. And he gets off on abusing black women. I have seen him next to chubby buddy overweight you know white women and he's not telling them oh you know you need to drop a few sizes you need to this 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 he's just happy to be in their lily white presence and these men prop themselves up as doing something good for the black community because they care about other black men no that's that that's not how things can work like not not with my involvement not with my approval no withdrawing myself Completely. Like. Oh, God. He said their opinions don't matter because they are foreign bedwinches. And his wife is one parent away from being something similar. One 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 parent away from being something similar. Like, how do you... Uh, these men, when it is convenient, will exalt the heck out of foreign women. Will exalt and, 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 put on, and pedestalize women who are non-African American. But when those same women that you put on a pedestal... Because I've seen so many pro-black African-American men who are just like, yeah, I'm going to marry a black woman, but not from America. I want to marry a Jamaican. I want to marry a UK Nigerian. I want to marry a Caribbean. I want to marry, you know, and they just hate African-American women. And I'm just like, these are normally the women who you would be telling everybody are so superior to African-American women. But now that they have an opinion that is against your own There are nothing but foreign bed wenches who don't deserve to have a voice. And I'm just like, dude, you you are behind the times. Like you really are a relic. You're you're like you're you're like anthropology. Like like your whole message needs to be like carbon dated so we can figure out what year it belongs to. What year is this? Like dude completely unaware of how he shows up in the world like you can't talk to people like that anymore nobody thinks like that anymore except for people who are are literally about to die off I mean I don't know how old this guy is is he in his 50s I am I, 60 I, I don't know but I'm just like you still think you're king flex and this is the 90s and you're a pimp Th- this is not how you can talk to women and get their support anymore People are not okay with this. You are now on a global scale all the time. All the time. It's not just, oh, national. It's not just a black, like all over the place. All over the earth. Like, like no. The world has become a community. And because of, because of that alone, your rhetoric is dated. Now, here's the deal. I personally have said to people, stop minding my African-American business. So sometimes UK Nigerians, they really like to, I'm just using them as an example. I could say Somalis, I could say Ethiopians, but like some, sometimes a UK Nigerian or if you like, like they will cross the line and I'm just like, I need you to stop minding my African-American business. I don't talk to you about what I think Ethiopians should do or how they should do it. So, uh, don't do that to me. 
I don't know the ins and outs of your context, just like you don't know the ins and outs of my context. So don't, don't cross that line. However, these women weren't doing that. These women weren't doing that. They weren't telling him how to deal with African-American issues and how to deal with the African-American community. They were just like, what do you do? Racism where? People all around the world, including, in, including African-American women, we were like, racism where? This has very little to do, to do with race and everything to do with mental health. And we all saw that. Like, like that was truly race baiting. That was truly playing the race card, which is an unsafe thing to do because it minimizes what we actually do suffer from. I mean, 181 African-Americans have been killed since the, the Derek Chauvin verdict. We really have a problem. We really have a race problem. So to take that legitimate problem and to superimpose it onto something that's so Ill- illegitimate on something so non-existent, I'm just like, dude, like, <sighs> what a waste. What, what a waste of an incredibly public platform. Like, people listen to this guy. That's another reason why I'm just like, this is a failure of black men. Like we cannot stop certain black men from idolizing non-black women. We just have to let them go. And I know he defines, you know, you know, people like this subscribe to the one drop rule. So if you've got a half black, you know, great grandmother, you're black to these people, octoroon, quadroons and and whatever else. But today, in modern times, biracial people identify as biracial. As they should, because that's what they truly are. They are black and white. So what you are calling a black woman in 2021, nobody else is calling that a black woman. It, it it's a dated thing like i can see how like you know if the the way for example the beautiful intelligent michi x speaks about herself she's in her 40s her mid or late 40s so she calls herself a black woman and for all intents and purposes when i see her i see a black woman however if you take a michi x and have her born in 2003 or 1999 it's no longer a black woman. It is now a biracial woman. So technically, Tariq Nasheed is not even married to a black woman. And yes, some of these identity things are truly arbitrary. I know if you're looking at my mother's birth certificate, it might say Negro. If you're looking at my birth certificate, it might say like the phrase African-American. I, I was already born before the phrase was designated as a group. Right, this whole Jesse Jackson thing, whatever this invention of this term that snatches us away from indigenous Aboriginal roots, right, and necessarily relegates us to Africa, even though some of us are from here, from the Americas. Um, th- this is a new term, and terminology for African Americans has been constantly changing to rip us from whatever roots we may have grown. It's already hard enough to be black without having black men who are only about themselves detract from our quality of life. So it it was incredibly hypocritical to hear a guy who is basically bigging up non-black women and talking about how he raises the European flag in the bedroom. That's a quote from Tariq Nasheed. To then like, oh, you don't matter because you're, you're, you're a non-African American. You don't matter because you're, dude, they're all that matter to you. Black women don't matter to you either. So if that's the case, we're their co-equals. They don't matter. We don't matter, matter either. We haven't mattered to you. We, we haven't mattered. You haven't lifted us up. You told all of our brothers and our, you know, you told all of our men to marry women who don't even look like us because we're inferior and we have bad attitudes and we're ugly and we're this and we're that. 
all that Kevin Samuel stuff. Okay, well, fine. Bye. Ex- expect nothing. And I love that these young women are just... <sighs> Us millennials and, you know, the Gen Z girls, are, they're, they're so over this. They're, they're not pygmies the way older millennials and Gen X women are. And, and boomer women are. They, they don't have that in their body. And it's a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Where women are just coming together. And realizing that we must learn to promote sisterhood. And to be allies of one another. And it's hard. It's hard. On YouTube, oh Lord, I have been dogged by so many women who identify as black. Yet and still, the mission is the mission, and it's a good one, and it's a noble aim. And men like this, we, we cannot allow them to be distractions. They, they truly deserve to be disowned and irrelevant to us. I mean, trending for what when you don't matter? Trending for what when your you, when your message is antiquated? Trending for what when we have to do carbon dating on your message just to figure out what year it belongs to? Like go put on your flex chapstick and sit down in your big dirty house, you know, with you know, Lord. Let me not talk about his home because like I said, you know, Peanut is the wife and, you know, Peanut is, is sis. That, that's our sister. Um, but this is a public figure and public figures, I'm sorry, they're not off limits. They're, they're, they're just not off limits. Their kids are, their family members are, but they are not. Mm, just the reality of things. This guy has no love or loyalty for black women. And therefore, we should return the same energy. I still maintain that Clubhouse is the ghetto. I have had people try to seduce me back onto the app. And um, for the most part, I can't be bothered. Every now and then, there's a good girl who comes along and says, Hey, you know, I feel like I can speak more freely on Clubhouse. Why don't you come back? And there are people that I, I support, you know on TikTok, on YouTube, on on another platform. And I'm like, oh, I want to support this person. But Clubhouse just, it, it gets <clears throat> something inherent in the app. I, it just creates anxiety for me. I'm proud of the way that those women handled Tariq Nasheed. Um... I could care less about a colorist like some of these colorist black men, even the ones in my own family. I got to be honest. I I have. I was such a pick me and such a loyal, bowing, scraping black woman and and black men were the center of my universe. Everything about my life was dedicated to the liberation and, the, and caring for and fighting for black men. And due to decades of not having that energy reciprocated, I learned to reevaluate myself. Now, when it comes to black men, I'm concerned with the black men in my life, my black man that I'm with, and my black nephews who I'm responsible for. But like, it's a case by case basis with the collective. I'm concerned with the black men who support uppity unicorn who are a part of my community, black men who are distinguished by their character. And we know that they also love black women, but I'm not about to, I'm not a crusader. I don't proselytize. I'm not trying to convert you to being pro-black woman. If you are anti-black woman, I invite you and welcome you to stay just that way. I don't want you. I don't want you around. I don't need you around. I would rather you not be around. And that is gently put. So this guy made a fool out of himself. And basically, he's a community. So he made a fool out of his community. 
So they're all looking like fools now because they support him. And they defend his words. This guy who, who, this black, th- this guy is like a 50-year-old struggling rapper. The black guy who filmed Caleb, the former Holiday Inn clerk. He's like a 50, 50-something-year-old, like, struggling rapper. Like, you can hear in his voice, like, you know, his gums are receding and, and, and he needs, you know, a root canal or something. Like, you, like you can hear it in his voice. Like, dude, you're, you're too old to still be trying to start a rap career. Hang it up. And then um, people shamed him on his Facebook and he was like, well, I said check on the B, like, like calling Caleb the B word. And I'm just like, you don't even see how you're being offensive. You don't even see how you're being disrespectful. You don't even see how that's not normal language for a normal human being. And I'm like, just, just, just throw the whole man away. Ew. Don't even recycle it. Just, just landfill. It's, it's, it's giving worthless, it's giving shiftless, it's giving me trifling, it's giving me stereotype, it's giving me, <sighs> see, I was about to say something brutal, and um, self-restraint. So anyhow, I had no idea that this happened in the ghetto, aka clubhouse, um, Maybe I shouldn't call it the ghetto. Maybe I should call it the trailer park or something. I don't know. Comment down below, like, what you think I should call it. Like, I mean, Clubhouse, maybe I can name it after a ghetto apartment building, like Central Heights or something. (laughs) But it's just a truly, from what I've seen, it's just a truly nasty place to be. It gets gutter. It gets, the interaction is so... Just just disrespectful in so many of these spaces. <sighs> in order for our room to like pop off and for there to be like hundreds of people there, like it's it's gotta get nasty. Um I'm, I'm I'm an extreme empath. I am a highly sensitive person, an incredibly fine-tuned instrument. I pick up so much on energy, I just no, <laughs> no, I wasted my money. <laughs> Let me find that kid and put him in here. Oh my God. Look, I love when these kinds of black men out themselves as anti-black female. Because we now know who to avoid. Oh. <sighs> We can look at somebody now and line them up against the attributes of a Tariq Nasheed. We can now judge people by, oh, you're you're a Tariq Nasheed follower? Mm Mm-hmm, okay. I said to my partner, you know, I would never be with a man who is a Kevin Samuel supporter. And my partner, I mean, both of us, like, we agree with some, I define Kevin Samuel's, um, First of all, I'm bringing him up because he's very similar to Tariq Nasheed in in ideology where they are pro-black male and anti-black female, right? However, I I look at him like a broken clock. Like it's it's right at least twice twice a day, right? So he says things sometimes that I agree with and that I've, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, that's true. That's, you know, word up. But overall, no, I, I cannot support a man who relishes in abusing black women. And I'm completely upset with the women who call into that show. I'm like, he is going to somehow, some way, find a way to make you the bad guy because he's anti-black female. This is not tough love. This is, there's no love. Same thing with Tariq. Same thing with the men that follow. Like, they would much rather be with other women. And my thing is, okay, go. Go and just don't come back. More black girl magic for me. More awesome black women for me in my dreams. Like, like, hell, like, leave us be. If you want to go, go. I will pack your bags and throw you a party like Bon Voyage. You guys, I, I, I can't. Um, anyhow, that's an update of what happened in the ghetto. All the sisters laid this guy straight. 
and the video I was watching, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It was a, a white guy with like a million subscribers and he was just really proud of the way the sisters handled uh, Tariq Nasheed, um, Tourette's Nasheed, who has the need to scream Bedouin every uh, ever so often. Again, it's a horrible word. Even uppity actually is a racial slur. And I know a lot of people don't think so, but it's just because people are so really and truly detached from American history. Um, I use uppity for a reason. If you want to know, I can probably post a video about it. But um, one of my favorite things, I mean, and I have a hard time with cancel culture, but one of my favorite things is like the woman who said to him, bro, you're canceled. He was like, you can't cancel me. And I'm just like, dude, that's the point of cancel culture. You don't have a say in the matter. You just do something silly to the point where people are done with you. And and he's done that. These men reveal themselves over and over again as anti-African-American women. Like, we owe it to ourselves to walk away. Ugh. I, I'm getting tired. Oh. I love y'all. Divest from these men. They're not worth it. The men who are will show you right away. The men who are will put themselves out there as worth it. And they come in every color. They come in black. They come in white. They come in a, a, rainbows, various religions. Just, just as a black woman... As a black woman, you need to be working twice as hard to stay away from people in your personal life and social life who don't care about you. We get too much of that already. So you're going to have to go to work. I mean, some of us are going to have to go to work with somebody who doesn't like us, doesn't support us, is bigoted, is racist, is prejudiced, is whatever. But like, as far as like the stuff that you can help, girl, run. Run for cover. I'm uppity and I'm out of here.